Good evening and welcome back to the latest edition of the Invest Talk Market Analysis for the week ending April 12th, 2024. Appreciate you all tuning in, liking and subscribing to this channel. I'm host Justin Klein and today I'm going to title the video Israel-Iran Conflict, Its Impact on Markets because that's what most people want to hear about, right? The, this is the big news over the weekend, just uh, kind of came in. This morning, it's still kind of evolving. I'm recording this uh, later in the evening on Saturday, uh, and so uh, it, it's it's pretty clear that uh, the Israel is Israeli strike on the Iran uh, consulate in um, in Damascus uh, was the impetus for this. Um, now the question is what type of escalation will this create what will israel do next um how much will the us be dragged into this uh and so you know it's a, it's a lot to be seen quite yet um certainly could be that this is you know only a handful of these drones missiles have, have gotten through uh most of them are easily intercepted um and, and iran knew this uh and you know, that might have been part of their calculus. Uh, most of these things are either cheap drones or cheaper cruise missiles, not costing uh, them a lot, uh, and could be their calculus. They're trying to cost Israel and the U.S. Um, a lot of money, expensive missiles, uh, etc. So we'll we'll see. Um, you know, I think there's still discussions, um, but ultimately. It'll be uh, the market will react based on how how this escalates. Um, and clearly, we've been in a bit of a risk off uh, zone for the past couple of weeks in markets. And you know, this could certainly escalate that. Um, and, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, before I get deeper into it, I want to touch on the economic news. And it's really all about inflation this week. You have the CPI number on Wednesday. That did accelerate to about three and a half percent year over year. The core number was roughly flat, but up a, a tiny bit. Um, at core CP, uh, core producer price, which came out on Thursday, the leading indicator to uh, the uh, the CPI number that did accelerate as well to two point three seven percent. Producer price two point oh nine. Uh, year over year. So sorry, core was 2.37 and the raw number is 2.09. The continuous claims that did come out on Thursday as well, uh, and that ticked up near the highs of the year. So uh, the jobs market is fine. It's kind of been a holding pattern. It's been that way since the fall, uh, but nothing that's indicating a huge breakout in uh, layoffs and, and unemployment. Uh, and then you have the export prices. Export import prices came out on Friday. Uh, that also did tick up a bit. You're still in negative territory year over year on export prices. Import prices ticked up into positive territory for the first positive territory for the first time since go all the way back yeah, since January of last year. So uh, nearly a year and a half now. So um, you know the inflation data is starting to accelerate. Um, that's clear. You look on a month-over-month -month basis, year-over-year, year, uh, the easy gains, shall we say, in inflation are behind us. Um, and it's pretty clear that we have sticky inflation. But it's also clear that the Fed and powers that be, they don't really want to acknowledge that quite yet. Uh, and they don't want to pivot their policy uh, dramatically quite yet either. So um, that's kind of where we're at. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll look over here with the, uh, CME index, uh, CME, uh, fed watch. And it's pretty clear they're, they're not going to do anything in May. Uh, June was pretty much on the table, uh, pretty much guaranteed not long ago. Uh, and now it's only about a 27% chance, 28% chance that there will be a rate cut in the month of June. And then you go all the way out to December. The market's really only pricing in now two rate cuts, right? Roughly. So it's 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 possible we could get to one rate cut or zero rate cuts by by the end of the year. So 
uh, a lot to be decided, uh, but clearly the uh, inflation data this week was not helpful in the narrative that the Fed will will continue to ease. Uh, and let's pivot over to the charts and talk about that. What was interesting about uh, a more hawkish shift in markets uh, and pricing in is that gold continues to power higher. Now, it did have a reversal on Friday on volume. So you could argue there's a pause coming, a consolidation, a pullback. Although now with this uh, intensifying of conflict, intensification of conflict, I would say, um, you know, I could see this retesting the high of Friday. Um, but this is typically a at least near term bearish signal. Now, long term, obviously, you know, you go to like a gold to do this gold to spy ratio and gold is starting to break out right it did that back in october you know that redux we talked about uh where uh, a lot of the trends from last year early on re-emerged closed to, to start the year um but that's all reversing here um and so you know this is a period where harder assets are getting bit um, just look at things like the USO. Here's the uh, oil prices, um, and then the industries that are uh, in, in into harder assets. Um, you know, this is uh, remains strong, remain in an uptrend, although probably needs a bit of cooling off um, because mainly the dollar. Look at the strength in the dollar uh, as of late. Um, you know, the highest level in uh, many months, and so uh, that's always going to put a damper on commodity prices to a degree uh but you can and you can see that here look at materials pulling back like i said energy pulling back um industrials pulling back those harder assets more uh traditional businesses are being hurt by the stronger dollar um and so uh that could be another catalyst for a pullback but the broader trends are still well intact um i do want to go over to another subsector though uh, look at banks Banks continue to struggle. Um, this is not getting any traction on the upside now below the, the 100 day moving average. And, and you can see never really attempted a, a true breakout here from those highs in December. Um, now, if you look at the XLF, which encompasses banks as well as a lot of other financial asset, financial uh, financials, uh, that started to roll over uh, as well. So just be aware of that. Banks uh, financials, I don't think, are, are great right now. Um, and you look at things like the uh, broker dealer, broker dealers rolling over as well. So these are the Morgan Stanley's, Goldman Sachs of the world. Um, and a lot of that probably has to do with this. So this is HYG to the IF. Uh, actually, let me do this, I like this one better. So this is short term junk to short term treasuries. And you can see this started weakened. So credit spreads are widening out a little bit, but not dramatically. But that is why you are getting. That bit of weakness in the s p and i think it's pretty clear we're at the 50 day so that is support but with this recent um this recent uh geopolitical escalation i could easily see this slicing through on monday and these are the basically the support levels on on the s p i think it's almost i don't say guaranteed nothing's guaranteed in markets but i think it's pretty clear we're going to head to this 40, about 5,000 on the S&P, uh, this, this green line here, this is the 2.5 retrace, 4,973. This would close this gap as well from February, uh, and gaps do tend to get filled. So uh, that would be the first major support level. Um, and then the next one that I think is major, major would be 48.21, that, that 3.82 retrace. Either one of those is, certainly uh achievable certainly viable um frankly would be a healthy refresh uh for markets and none of, neither of those uh, levels would violate any longer term uptrends right um, there's no reason to think that you can't have something like this that we had last uh late summer uh early fall that what did that do you know that just refreshed markets people got bearish again after you know a, a few months of you know red and and it's uh, people are soft in these markets you know when they're so used to um the fed coming in and kind of solving everything um you know that's what 
you know, that's what uh, they, they tend to want to see. And they see any little bit of volatility and they freak out. Uh, when in reality, a 10% pullback in markets is something that uh, everybody should expect in any given year. That is a normal level of um, normal level of volatility in markets. Uh, I do want to show about the, show you the 10 year. The 10 year is uh, continues to march up. Uh, obviously, that's uh, probably what's weighing on banks a little bit. Um, so I wanted to uh, highlight that because. You know, the Fed's going to want to manage this, make sure this doesn't break out dramatically to the upside. I still think we're relatively range bound between this, call it three and uh, three quarters and four and a half. I don't think the Fed's going to want to get much above four and a half. And they'll probably try to manage that by issuing on the, uh, or, or adjusting QT as well as the Treasury uh, issuing on the short end. And I think that will prevent any major breakout in longer term rates, even though inflation data continues to surprise to the upside. Uh, I want to get to the move index as well. The move index is starting to move, <laughs> shall we say. Uh, you're up to 112. Now it's not uh, that 150 level that I've talked about many times where there, there's, there's treasury market dysfunction. But this is a pretty rapid move from the low 80s all the way to 112. And I'll be very interested to see where this goes on this recent conflict. So just be aware of that. Uh, watch for that. And that's going to be a strong signal of how potentially dysfunction, dysfunctional the treasury market is going forward. Um, what else do I want to get to? Oh, let's go to silver to gold. Go back to this. Um, uh, silver did pull back here. It's a silver to gold ratio. Um, and here's silver. Yeah, I mean, this is topping as well. It's just like gold. Um, and when I say topping, at least near term, uh, it's overbought, moved far pretty fast. You saw headlines about gold prices. Uh, and typically, that means you're near at least a, a near term uh, high in markets. And I think that certainly could be the case here. Uh, but I still think that's probably a dip you want to be buying as opposed to uh, selling. All right. Uh, what else do I want to get to? I always love calling covering ARC because you know so many people got caught up in the Kathy Wood hype and uh, the spin the, the stories that they spin uh, and uh, think that this is the best place to to allocate capital and frankly it's one of the worst places to, to uh, allocate your capital and uh, you see that in the chart here uh, and the fact that this really has been down since the beginning of the year <laughs> right this is their flagship fund and it just continues to uh trend lower obviously they're head they're, they're heavily invested in tesla and that continues to um look poor uh and so uh and then look at nvidia nvidia uh that one is starting to lose its momentum look at the macd really starting to head down here if this hits below zero that is a strong indication that this nvidia um chart has topped uh, for a while. So I'll be on the lookout for that as well. Um, but that's what I'm expecting in markets. I would say near term, you have to be bearish uh, just on the geopolitical concerns. And uh, But this is uh, probably something that lasts for a month, maybe two, uh, call it till June-ish in that range. Um, and, and that's where you'll uh, likely see that bottom bottoming opportunity um, for that next move higher. Because I do think liquidity dynamics and markets remain relatively robust. The econ economy remains on a reasonable footing, uh, at least in the near term. Uh, obviously, you could argue that's driven by fiscal spending, et cetera. And, and th that fiscal side could be taken away by the bond market at any point, as I talked about with the move index. But you know, that's, that's a lot of what ifs. That's a lot of at some point. But you know, our jobs as uh, advisors is to advise clients on what's happening, you know, in here and now in the next, you know, handful of months, weeks and quarters, um, not necessarily what happens five, 10 years from now, because you can always shift positioning and we're always able to do that and you need to be as well. And so hopefully this video gave you some context of what's happening uh, in markets right now uh, in the geopolitical situation and how potentially to adjust your portfolio accordingly. I appreciate you all tuning in. A reminder that the contents of this video are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell security or to participate in investment strategy. The views are my own and do not represent those of KP Financial 
or those associated. Have a wonderful weekend.